Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load and save data for your game. So I've got a simple scene set up here with some cubes that I can click on to change the color. And if I stop playing and start playing, you'll see that the colors come back exactly as I had clicked. Now I'm going to switch on like just the red in the right corner, stop and play one more time. And when we restart, you'll see that that data has saved off. So let me show you how I save this stuff off. Uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, take a look at our scene. So here you see we have a game data controller object with a single script on it, nothing else that you can really see there. And then I've got these five cubes. The cubes are all really simple. They just have a magic cube script on them that checks for a ray cast. In fact, let's open it up. Here we do a check to see if I click. If I click, we do a ray. We do a ray cast from that ray with this collider. If we clicked on it, we switch the is red property to be opposite of what it is. So if it's not red, it'll become red. If it is if it is red, it'll become not red. And then call an update color that just updates the material based on whether or not it's red. And then finally, we see down here, we call into the game data controller and tell it to set the state of this object. So here I'm passing in the object and the state that I want to use. You also notice that in start, I'm setting this again, or I'm pulling it from the game data controller and just saying game data controller dot get state and passing this object in, getting back the is red value, and then again updating the color. So that's how it's kind of loading and unloading. But let's take a look at the details of how this loading and unloading actually works. So in the set state, well, actually let's let's start up above. Uh, in a wake of our game data controller, we load our data. Now to load the data, a lot of time we'll use player prefs. Um, sometimes we'll write out to a file. In this case, what I wanted to show was how to do it with uh, JSON serialization. So you could swap this in with binary serialization or any other serializer that you want, but this is just using the built-in default serializer. So what I do here in the save game, we take this save data object, you can see that's defined right up here. We serialize it out to a string and then shove that into game data. And then in load data, we pull that string out of this game data player pref object and then we deserialize it using JSON utility dot from JSON and passing in that data, we'll get back this save data object. So let's take a look at the save data object and then I wanna step through this and just kinda of show it in action to break down how everything's working a little bit more. So the save data object is actually a uh, struct. In fact, if you look in the file, it's actually two structs. So we have uh, an initial struct here that has some kind of generic, you know, the normal types of things that you might see in a game, maybe current health, um, the level that you've beat, any other data that you would have that's more generic and like there's one of in the scene. It's just, or one of in your game, I guess. There's just one instance of it here. But then I also have a list of this magic cube data. And if you look down here, you'll see that's another struct with an ID that's actually a string. And in this case, we're just shoving the name in there. And then a Boolean for whether or not the thing is red. So when we save this off, we're actually saving off this list of cubes as well as the uh, base data here. And you're gonna see that in just a moment. And it's important to note that we're not using a dictionary here. And the reason for that is that the built-in serialization doesn't support dictionaries. If you wanna use dictionaries in your data, uh, you just need to switch over to something like json.net, which I usually recommend, but it's not free in here, so I didn't wanna use that as the demo. And I wanna show that you can still do this kind of thing without using a dictionary if you need. So let's uh, attach real quick. And we're gonna step through the code, just gonna watch what's happening. So let's see, I'm gonna start in load data at a breakpoint here, and I'm gonna stop playing and restart playing. We should hit the breakpoint, kinda step through and see how this is working. All right, there we go, we've hit the breakpoint. So the first thing you see, if I hit F10 to step over this, this data string is filled up with all of this text. And if I hit the little button here, kinda pop it over and see, and you see it's just a JSON serialized string with uh, current health set to zero, last level beat set to zero, and then our list of cubes is right here. So here you can see the ID is actually just the name of the cube right now, and then we have the true or false state for whether or not it's red. Now, when I call, when I look at save data, if I expand this out, you see that right now it's empty. We haven't executed this line, so there's no health, no level beat, and magic cubes is null. When I hit F10 one more time and let it do the deserialization, all of a sudden you'll see that these still are zero because I never put any data in there, but the magic cubes, this is all filled out. So now when I call into 
my checks against this data here, so that's uh, right here in get state, I'll be able to see the, the state of these objects. So let's put another breakpoint here in get state and see what happens. I'm gonna hit F5. So here we're getting called, let's go up the call stack real quick. We're getting called from a magic cubes start and here we're passing in the magic cube. This is cube four and we're just trying to figure out if it's red. We go back in here. So first thing we do is just check to make sure that magic cubes is actually initialized. If it's null, we don't have any data for it, so we'll return back the false or the default. This shouldn't really happen, but it's good to have there have it as a check in case something blows up and goes really bad. Uh, the next thing I do is check to see if there are any magic cubes with an ID equal to this magic cubes name. If there are, I get the first one and return back the is red property. Now this won't catch a case where we have a multiple of the same name of an object, this could be an issue. The ID should really be something unique. In this case, I used the name because it was simple and I didn't want to dive into building up a unique identifier. But you could definitely do something like that. Just create a unique ID and keep track of it. You need to make sure that when you clone or duplicate the objects though, that that unique ID is still unique. So you want to have some extra checks in there for that. But using the name, if the names are unique, is also going to be fine. It, definitely in this case, it's totally fine. So here we returned back out a value, and that value was false. And then if I hit a five, you'll see we get it again, and we're gonna get it four times, or five, four more times. There we go, we've got it all five times. Now let me show you the saving part and kind of wrap this up. So I'm gonna just check that one cube and uncheck these two, and I'm going to stop playing, but first I wanna put a breakpoint. So in on disable, this is how I'm saving. I also have a uh, right click menu option, by the way, to save. So if I go right here, right click and save data, you can see it, it'll save too. Actually, let, let's, um, yeah, whatever. Let's just stop playing, hit the save and step through. So here we go, we, stop, we hit save game. Now we have our save data object. If I expand this out, um, you see magic cubes, only one of these is set to true. By the way, the reason I can see this data kind of formatted this way is I use uh, an extension for Visual Studio called OzCode. It's really awesome, I love it, and it makes this kind of stuff nice and simple so I can kind of expand and check the uh, or star the things that I care about and want to see in the list, and then those just show up there. It, it's, it's really awesome. Definitely worth trying out. I think they have a free trial. Anyway, you can see here that is red is only true for cube three, right, in this, uh, in this data. Actually, I'm gonna load it and we're gonna get the same exact thing because I already loaded it once. But here, let's look at the string data one more time. So here's all that data. Um, and if I went in and changed this, by the way, right now, at this breakpoint, we would, uh, it wouldn't matter at all, would it? Yeah, it would, yeah, because we would serialize out the other save data. Sorry, <laughs> just getting myself a little confused here. But you can see this is the string, and then we call player prep set string. It saved it off, and that was the serialized version of this thing. Um, sorry, I got a little rambly there at the end. Uh, Oz code just kind of is awesome and gets me a little bit distracted. But I think this kind of covers the, the basics. Again, um, on your save data object, or whatever you want to call it, make sure that you have it marked serializable and that any other class that you're going to serialize underneath it, like this magic cube data, is also serializable. Um, if you run into issues with things not serializing, it's probably just a type that's not supported by the built-in serializer. I highly recommend uh, json.net. There's an asset store plugin. There may be a free version of it out there too now. Um, it's definitely worth trying though. It kind of simplifies that stuff even more if you need it. If you don't need it and you just want to save basic data, this will totally work. Now, uh, just to kind of wrap this up, the other thing that you could do is binary serialize this data instead of JSON. So if you don't want people to be able to go in and load your data and modify it and change it, uh, binary serialization will make that a bit harder. So it's not just plain text readable in the registry or wherever else, depending on the device. Uh, personally, I usually don't really care about it because if we're not securing something important, it doesn't really matter. I don't care if a player hacks my, my little game or not, but if it's something important, you know, consider that. Don't just drop it all into text. Then the same would be said with just using player prefs. That again, just writes it out as plain text and it's um, a little bit less secure, I guess. Um, anyway, I think, again, sorry to keep rambling. I think this is good. We've got the basics down. If you have questions about this stuff or want to do some other serialization or save some other kind of data that this doesn't work with or you're just not quite sure how to hook it up with your system, uh, feel free to drop a comment below or uh, drop me a message on the, 
the Facebook group or an email, and I'll be happy to get back to you. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and all the stuff. Thanks.